Freedom of thought. The displacement of philosophy by science has led, as we know, to a separation of the two elements whose unity, according to Hegel, constitutes the life of philosophy, reflection and speculation. The land of truth is handed over in disillusion to reflection and speculation is tolerated ungraciously within it, merely for the purpose of formulating hypotheses which must be conceived outside working hours and yield results as quickly as possible. To believe, however, that the speculative realm has been preserved unscathed in its extra scientific form, left in peace by the bustle of universal statistics, would be to err grievously. First, severance from reflection costs speculation itself dear enough. It is either degraded to a docile echo of traditional philosophical schemes or, in its aloofness from blinded facts, perverted to the non-committal chatter of a private Welton Shung. Not satisfied with this, however, science assimilates speculation to its own operations. Among the public functions of psychoanalysis, this is not the least. Its medium is free association. The way into the patient's unconscious is laid open by persuading him to forgo the responsibility of reflection, and the formation of analytic theory follows the same track, whether it allows its findings to be traced by the progress and the falterings of these associations, or whether the analysts, and I mean precisely the most gifted of them, like Grodick, trust to their own associations. <clears throat> we are presented on the couch with a relaxed performance of what was once enacted with the utmost exertion of thought by Schelling and Hegel on the lecturer's podium, the deciphering of the phenomenon. But this drop in tension affects the quality of the thought. The difference is hardly less than that between the philosophy of revelation and the random gossip of a mother-in-law. The same movement of mind which was once to elevate its material to a concept is itself reduced to mere material for conceptual ordering. The ideas one has are just good enough to allow experts to decide whether their originator is a compulsive character, an oral type, or a hysteric. Thanks to the diminished responsibility that lies in its severance from reflection, from rational control, speculation is itself handed over as an object to science, whose subjectivity is extinguished with it. Thought in allowing itself to be reminded of its unconscious origins by the administrative structure of analysis, forgets to be thought. From true judgment, it becomes neutral stuff. Instead of mastering itself by performing the task of conceptualization, it entrusts itself impotently to processing by the doctor, who in any case knows everything beforehand. Thus, speculation is definitively crushed, becoming itself a fact to be included in one of the departments of classification, as proof that nothing changes.